Looks like we're up and running. Good morning. It's been, I don't even remember how long since we've had the camera pointed in this direction. It's been the sunshine, you know, the recent few months. The sun is in that area over there behind the sky tree, and uh, I can't point the camera that direction, but uh, it's overcast today, and I think we're forecast for a weekend of steady rain. No, uh, no fun this weekend. It's going to rain, 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 apparently, so we'll see. doesn't matter to us. We have lots and lots of work to do, but uh, good morning, gang. <laughs> okay, the work is predictable this week for sure. You know what's happening. You saw it on a Thursday where we're along with this blog. Actually, I've come along. The part that you saw me start to carve, the, the top end of this print, is now actually done. And I'm moving along to the bottom one. In fact, it could be that we'll finish this block today. We'll see. We'll see. I've got to work next on the small stuff. You were complaining before that we didn't get to see any ruler work. We'll see ruler work today. Lots of it. Lots of ruler work. Junk. Okay, this reminds me too, all the junk here. The, the parts for the spray machine. I have video. I have video. We'll, we'll save it for later, 9 o'clock or something like that. I have video from the upstairs laboratory. <laughs> so. The Chiri Tori Labo laboratory. I have video. And I think we, I can't say success, but I think we, we can see where this is going to go. And thank you for everybody who's going to see this, the suggestions about the Chiri Tori. There's, it's wonderful, 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 wonderful. There's so much stuff that I hadn't thought about. There's the usual suggestions about centrifuge and stuff. We'll talk about this when I show the video. But there's also some interesting new suggestions. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> Kozo Water Park, it is upstairs. <laughs> I spilled whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, we're gonna carve this morning. Before I do, before I do, just one thing to quickly open. I won't be working on this this morning. But uh, you know by the tape and the packaging who this is from, right? We'll just quickly open this and put it aside. It needs to be embossed, but I don't have the embossing block ready for it. But you know who this is from, with the little double fold at the side and white, white green tape. It's Kubota-san, of course. He always sends his prints this way. If I had opened it this far, at this point, you know who this is. Not Kawasaki, Kubota. You're getting your case confused. Kawasaki-san is one of our carvers. Kubota-san is one of our printers. Oops. Give me back a chocolate egg. <laughs> <laughs> Kubota. We mentioned it in the last stream, so. His trademarks, you know, the flat, beautiful, clean deck of prints, the sharp covers, you know, the string perfectly tied, these are all his trademarks. He's a super control freak and he must be so proud of, proud of it. It's not foam core, this is thick, thick, dense hardboard. He, he, he. This is dead. this is the board we use to dry our prints. It's I think three millimeters thick. It's thick and dense. It's really expensive, and he has chopped up a large board of it to make these. We keep sending him back to it. When I send him some blocks every now and then, I send back the ones that he's done. So this is not foam core. This is the real stuff. And yes, we've given him this. I don't even know how many batches we've done of this. This is a stunning, stunning bestseller for us. And we're now on our third printer. Rei-chan did a group. Suga-san did a group. We've now sent it to Kubota-san. This is going to be a bestseller for us for generations till long after I'm gone. As will be the next one. You've got to see. Lei Chan's done test printing on the next one. I can't show you yet. She asked me not to show you. It's going to blow your socks off. The third one we're doing, the Descending Geese, it's as good as this. It's absolutely going to blow you away. My God, I 
it looks real. It just looks just wonderful. The transparency in the water. Look at this. We've got the whatever, just whatever, whatever. We're working on it. <laughs> That's the designer, Jonathan Huff. Anyway, and the series name, of course, is um, Neko Hake, Eight Views of Cats. I am so proud of this. You know, I didn't touch it. We've talked about this before. I didn't touch this thing. I didn't design it. I didn't carve it. I didn't print it. But I am so proud of this. My fingerprints are everywhere. <laughs> and let's quick it. Oh. No cut corners. Really? He's marked a couple, yes. The last couple here are not uh, up to it, yes. So, 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 so. What he's done is he's uh, he's penciled for me. I'm not sure if I really want him to do this. He's penciled for me because some of the things he's penciled could be things that I could fix. I have to talk to him about that. Cut the corners, I don't mind. Penciling the print, I don't know about that. Anyway, there they are. We're also getting these done before we run out. This this has been on sale in our shop. This is selling in our shop for a long time. We haven't run out. Sometimes we run out of stuff and the printers try and catch up. We still have them in stock from Sugasan. This will be the next batch. No, these aren't sold already. These are just gonna go into our inventory. This print is currently online in our shop. It's not a subscription series. Those are not sold yet. They will be over the next few months, you tell me. Two months, three months, half a year, I don't know. Someone's got a word. They like the cat cartouche, the show. But this was, I think this was John San's idea, Day Chan's idea. I don't remember, actually. It could have been my idea. I don't remember whose idea it was. The next one, the third print in the series, the Descending Geese one, does not have this. And I'm, you're like, what? It's a series. We've got to have the same cartouche on all of them. The third one does not have this cartouche. But it's okay. Trust me. Trust me. It's all right. <laughs> the third one is so much fun. It's so good. Oh, light bulb. Light bulb, light bulb, light bulb. No, I'm not going to show you Descending Geese. Just when it's done. She's printing it now. Dejan is printing it as we speak. She's at home printing it. The thing is, it's going to take 55 years. There's like 46 colors or something. I don't know. It's not 46 colors, but it, it ain't 12. It's not 15. It's not 20. It's not 25. <laughs> I'm not teasing you. This is this is fair. She doesn't want me to show you till it's finished. I, teasing, just mentioning something that's coming up is not teasing. Oh, it's turned on. It most definitely is turned on. This is the old, Japan still sells these. This is an incandescent bulb. We have, of course, the new ones, the LEDs, the stuff like this, my, my floodlight here for the video. This is an LED something something spiral print. But they do still sell these. I think places in Europe or something, this is illegal or something. I'm dealing in, in illegal merchandise here, perhaps. But here in Japan, they do still sell them. They don't make them in Japan, and this is going to be made in, you know where it's going to be made. Yes, indeed, it's made in, you know where. So they don't make them in Japan, and they do, they don't last very long. But, 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 and the reason I don't want the modern one here is because it takes so long to, to start up. I just want this to be able to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. But for most of our shop, the sh all the heavy lights in the shop, they're all the modern type, of course. It would be silly to, to not to do that, so. I just want the softer light here in front of me, in front of my eyes, you know, absolutely. 
it's a low wattage at 60 watt I tried an LED one and it's just too bright I'd have to rig up some kind of a thing but yes the, the rest of the building is functionally we've switched to LEDs of course absolutely Okay, let me get the location here. We are going to be carving right Do some lines first. We're going to do it right there. So let's find the spot. It might be a bit difficult to see what's going to go on here because I'm going to use the ruler here and I'm left-handed so I'm going to cut from the left and the camera is over on the right-hand side. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. Let's give it a try. I'm sure there are modern bulbs that I could find that would work, but whatever, I'm sure. Okay, here we go. Let's see how long it takes people to complain about this. Let's see. This just about fills the view I can see here in the scope. I can just barely see the top and I can barely see the bottom. So this is actually a good indication of my field of view here. Can't see that anymore. So right from the top, right to the bottom. And this one, I can't get it all in, so we're going to do this in stages. And there's no way I can do this without the scope now. It's just, I need the... I just can't see. out here Why am I cutting with the bevel against the line? I'm not cutting with the bevel against the line. I'm cutting with the flat side on the line. There's the line. There's the space we want to roll. I'm putting the knife, I'm putting the knife against this face and with the bevel against the line, I'm cutting. 
So in other words, I'm cutting exactly as I normally do. I'm just doing the normal cutting, but the knife here is stopping, I mean the, the, the ruler here is stopping the knife from wandering away. So I'm not putting the ruler on covering the line and cutting this way, because that would give me the angle incorrectly. Jacques is asking, where's the surfer girl? No, no offense, Jacques. It's just uh, the, the jobs have a priority and they float. At the top always is the subscription prints. Always. That has to be done. Then the order flow, everything else. The camera and job, all the other stuff. There are jobs that are time priority. Patreon shipping prints have to go out in May. So that floats to the top because it's time sensitive. Eight cats floated above the surfer because it's been over a year since I've done a cat. So it's all, it all floats, jacques -san. I would love to do it. It's coming up. It'll be next for me after this is done. So no offense, Jock. You can say what you like. I'm okay. I'm totally all right. So. <laughs> It's just, you know, juggle, 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 juggle. <laughs> That's all we're doing, so. <laughs> all we're doing. Now, what's going to happen soon is Okada-san's family is going to start to ask, Hey, Dave, I know you were so enthusiastic about getting started, but uh, when, like, when are we going to see a print, you know? So the family is going to start to bother me soon. Not bother me, but they're going to start to ask what's going on. You know. What Jacques should be asking about is the Inkstone boys. <laughs> Actually, I have a problem with that. And I mean, I really have a problem with that. I'm not sure if the, the backstory here, the Inkstone boys print is a print being made here that is from my work before Mokohankan. I was making a living publishing subscription prints in sets. This was for 25 years, from about 1989 until, quote, the present, unquote. And as such, my tax status was what they call kojin jigyo, on a personal business, private business. It wasn't incorporated, it wasn't a company move along and uh, two and a half years ago or through nearly three years ago two and a half years ago we incorporated our work here now so i became not a kojin jigyo anymore i'm no longer a private business anymore we became a company and I'm, I'm the owner one of the two owners of the company all fine and all very well but it turns out that when you become an executive of a company and I am, you know, an executive of a corporation that deals in woodblock prints. I'm what's called a daihyo. It makes it sound very big and fancy, but whatever. But that is the legal term. I am an executive of a corporation. It's a very small one, but there it is. And the, it turns out there's laws about what you can do and what you can't do when you become the executive of a corporation. And what you can't do is you can't dabble in your own field. If you're the executive of a corporation dealing in X, you cannot have a part-time business involved in X. And I guess it's for reasons of uh, uh, arm's length transactions and stuff like this and stuff like this. They found that there's all kinds of people do slate of hand and fool around with taxes and whatever. Point of the story is I am no longer legally permitted to sell woodblock prints, Dave Bo personally. I'm the executive of a company that makes and sells woodblock prints, but this man personally can no longer make and sell woodblock prints, legally. And we had no idea this was in the background. I was just thinking, no problem, I'll run Moko Hong Kong, and then when I get some time to myself, I'll go back and continue my own subscription series, etc., etc., finish off the one that's partway through. It turns out I am not in any way legally allowed to do that. And the tax, our, our tax accountant, this is last year when he was doing our year in, he said, don't even think about fooling around with this. He said, they will jump on you with both feet. Don't even think about that. So I said, wait, 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 I've got collectors. I'm supposed to be making a print. They're waiting for the next print in the series. He said, I don't care what you do, but you're making prints, but you cannot sell those. 
yourself. It will have to go through Mokohanka. So Dave's personal printmaking will have to be wrapped up, and that series that I'm partway through will have to be a Mokohankan subscription series that is partway finished and stuff like that. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I don't know if it's conflict of interest. It's something to do with third-party transactions. I, I don't know the legal ins and outs of it whatsoever, but I guess the tax people over the years have found out that Whatever, I don't know, any, any accounts and so on. Yeah, Jacques, Jacques is a collector actually waiting for this. Jacques supported my work since I don't even know. When did you come on board, Jacques? After the poets, I think, I can't remember. Yeah, so John Becker's got it here, so of course, of course, I would put my own seal on them, I will sign them, but simply the money transactions and stuff will have to be through Mokohankan. Nobody, I will not be allowed to take money for a print directly, that's all it amounts to. So yes, I can still make them, we can put them into the world, I can sign them, I can do whatever I want with the physical appearance of them, that's irrelevant. But I will not be able to accept any money for them. I can give them away. We've been uh, bitten by so many funny rules that we didn't know were there, you know. All the years I've been doing business here, I've been telling people, Japanese bureaucracy, no problem, they've left me alone, it's cool, there's been no barriers to my work, they've never bothered me. I've been lightly audited a couple of times because they do want to see where my income is coming from, etc., etc. But there's been very little bureaucracy and I can't complain about Japan in that respect. I have said that many times over the years. Now that we're a company, it's completely and totally and absolutely different. The boom came down, and now we are controlled. There's so many things that we are not allowed to do that we must line up with. And simply, the, the system here benefits and helps small independent businesses. And I was a small independent business, and they kept out of my way. They let me do what I wanted to do, no regulation. As long as I kept clean with my income tax, that was it. But now that we're a company, oh my God, the regulations and regulations and regulations. The paperwork, Aoyama-san is almost a full-time paperwork guy. That's how bad it is. For a little company that has like 20 employees, we almost have a full-time paperwork person. Yeah. Pensions, healthcare, stuff like that. I don't mind paying them, but my God, the paperwork. Crap. This is tougher. With the grain is much tougher. I've got to be really careful to keep this knife on these lines here. Cross the grain is easy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just a sec. How many things here? Where am I? Here. Sokka. All right, sorry about that. It's been half an hour. So I'll keep it. Sorry. Hey, hey. we can't reverse the decision that we have uh, we were basically forced into it I had just too many employees the problem became I became too big for what is allowed to be a private little personal business in the early years it had been okay it was just me but once you've got a bunch of employees they are working X hours a week and there are laws saying anybody who's working X X plus hours a week you must pay health care you must do pension stuff like this it's common sense laws I'm not bitching about that part of it but I had become too big and I was forced to actually become a company. So, 
and I get it. It's for the benefit of society. I'm not sort of bitching about the world here. Just it is frustrating in the amount of uh, paperwork we have to do. But, uh, stuff like paying for the insurance and the pensions and things. I am not bitching about that at all much. That's better, isn't it? We've, of course, got a new employee starting on Friday, one week from now, Ayana Sun starts. I think she's coming today. She's coming this morning. She may be dropping in this morning. What time is it now? Ayana Sun, I think, is going to drop in this morning. And she starts full-time next Friday. More health care, more pensions. <laughs> the empire expands. It's getting scary now, just hauntingly it's getting scary. So many people here now. So that's from a microscope camera. Yes, it's 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 coming. We've got some gear here. We have a, a trinocular microscope in the wings waiting. We have a kind of microscope camera waiting. I tried it a couple of years ago and I failed because uh, of the requirements for super strong light on the surface, on the work surface. So it's uh, waiting for time to get it set up and tested again. But yes, we may see this sometime in the not too distant future. The thing is, so if, even if, if when we do experiment with the microscope view so that you can see exactly what I see, I'm not really sure we're going to do that all the time because it's not actually all that interesting. I know you can't see what's going on. I know you can see the knife in the wood, but you can't really see what's going on. And even myself, when I'm looking at this, I sit out and get the overview to see where I am and what's happening and, you know. And if it was just the microscope view, you would be lost, I think. Well, that one's not cut yet. Oh, I missed one. I thought it was cut. Oh, it's scratched, but just so lightly. I see. I must have got distracted there when I was doing it. Yeah, it's scratched. I see. Okay.
and we were popping the frame here in a couple of places and it's become a it's become a thing these days so. I did decide what to do here, and now I've popped the frame. If we look at it the correct way around. So we've popped the outside frame a bit, and it wouldn't have made sense to put the inside line through here, so the inside line's also been gone. And then for this one, the idea was perhaps to bring his arm up into the open space, but it looked really, really funny, so I cut that back. We've just left it popping the inside frame, but not the outside frame. And of course, these prints are going to go separately. This one will be sent in the summer this year. This print will be posted in around May or June. And this one will go in November, December after that. So this will be active for six months. And then the same people in Patreon will get this one as well. But we're also going to have a problem. The people who say start Patreon this year in November, they never saw this because they weren't part of it in the summer. They joined up in the winter. They're just going to get this one. So I, I have yet to figure out how to get around that. <laughs> okay, next comes now the outside borders. The outside. We're going to finish the inside. Not sure there's any news and stuff from outside. The ninja people are still up and running. They're very, very busy. They had a TV. Oh, there was one. Somebody in the chat, I was reading the chat the other day, and somebody said a hearse pulled up across the street. And I didn't see any hearse. When I looked at the VOD, there was a black truck that pulled up across the street outside the ninja place. Turned out to be a TV company or, or movie company or video company of some kind. And it was happening just as we were finishing our stream. They were starting up. So the ninja people had some kind of a media event the other day. Maybe they'll be on TV show or something like that. I don't know. So that was what that was all about. They seem to be okay. The construction seems to have been the excavation. And there's also confusion about the, the scaffolding and the buildings coming down. We saw scaffolding come. That was for the theater building. They put scaffolding on the outside. They put some gas pipes up the outside wall. And they excavated gas down at the bottom. So it seemed the people up on the third floor needed new gas fittings, then it needed scaffolding on the whole building to get the pipes up there. So that was the theater building, which is two, three doors down to the left of us. The building construction, the building that was torn down and will now start to be rebuilt, that's behind us in the back street. It's the building that would, if you could go out our back wall, which we can't, it would be the building you see on the left once you go out the back wall. And that is now all taken down. It's just a hole in the ground. And we've heard the jackhammering. That was jack, jackhammering away the foundations of the previous building so that they can start fresh new construction there. other trivia news <laughs> trivia news I guess whatever I got a call yesterday from our OMIT workshop 
<laughs> you see how we stand over in our OE workshop says, Dave, Dave, Dave. Abe-san is back, she told me. And she phoned me specifically with that news. Abe-san is back. I don't know if many of you remember what that's about, but uh, so yes, Abe-san is back. So I'll be going out to Ome next Tuesday. Apparently she starts up again on Tuesday, I'm told. So I have a, a mandated trip to Ome next Tuesday. A long overdue mandated trip to Ome. But you can really remember who Abe-san is. Abe-san is the lady with the shears, the garden shears. <laughs> yes. So. Have I watched the NHK segment? Of course I did, no problem, I watched it live. Sure, sure, it's okay, it was pleasant. Um, it's not what it could have been. The, the plan was for a normal crew to come, a normal video crew, professional cameraman, professional audio, whatever. That got canceled. Uh, just as the time they were planning the filming this, Tokyo went into one more of those quasi lockdowns. And it wasn't a lockdown, but NHK got the rule, nobody out of the building. So that thing was filmed by one young little girl with a camera holding in her hand. So the, the camera work is awful, the settings are no good, the audio is terrible, whatever. They did what they could, it's not, it's not a complaint, just pointing out that uh, that's all it was. So it's too bad, you can't, can't, fight, uh, can't fight that. But NHK usually, their production values are usually very, very, very high. And that, that little segment, the production values are extremely low. The lighting is terrible, the posing is terrible. They did half of my interview with me sitting against a blank wall and not focused in, you know, I mean, come on. It doesn't matter, anyway. People seem to have enjoyed it, but, uh, but it's very much affected by the... Uh, you know. Okay, I think I have cut all the lines. Inside is all clear and clean. I did this yesterday afternoon. That one's all done. The small border lines are cut. The outside lines are cut. It's time to get serious. Questions, questions. I'm missing a bunch of questions here, I'm sure. It's funny, you mentioned the missed sweater. You mentioned this. Uh, there was a, an occasion a few days ago, somebody had uh, asked a question about one of the prints that were for, was for sale in the shop. And in order to get a, a proper idea of the size of the print, Watanabe-san asked me, she said, hey, stand there and take a whole picture of the print. So I stood there the other day with the print in and we sent the print to the person who had requested the, the picture. They wanted to see how large the print was, I guess. And I hadn't thought about it, but I had stood there with the print. It was one of the big Goyo prints, whatever. I had stood there with the print, holding it up, and just part of my sweatshirt had been showing, the missed sweatshirt, and it had just shown the letter M. I didn't really think of it, just whatever. There's Dave standing there holding the picture, bah, trying to stop my face from looking too geeky, whatever. And the lady wrote back and said, where can I get one of those Mokohankan shirts? <laughs> this is so much fun. She's probably here today. I'm not, I'm not shooting at her. It was just, I'm like, what? Where can I get one of those Mokohankan shirts? You know, And just because she saw the letter M, assuming it was Mokohankan. <laughs> so, so after we looked at that here, we got the email. Watanabe-san said, well, that's it, you know, merch, merch. Should we do this, you know? And I'm like, I do not want to start selling merch. I just don't want to do that. I despise the name. I just don't want to do this, you know? I really don't want to do this. I, should have, I shouldn't have started this conversation because I know people are going to ask for it. Can we get a, a, a you know, Mokonkan t-shirt? I don't know. I'm, I'm in no way. We're busy. We're busy. I'm not going to start fooling around with stuff like that. But my personal inclination is no. And part of it is because of that word merch. Remember the documentary a few years ago, the guy who did the documentary, the one that was playing in the airlines? He was adamant about that. Dave, you've got to get into merch. Everybody's into merch. you got an Instagram. You need merch. And he was just hounding me on this. 
And part of my dislike of this is just that guy and what he was doing to me. I don't want merch. God, we make woodblock prints. But I don't know, whatever, 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 whatever. I know people say, it's okay, whatever, t-shirt. Yes, 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 you don't have to think badly of it. I understand, I get it, I get it. I'm not, I'm not, you know, just whatever. Whatever, I would have to be talked into it. The other thing is too, we do t-shirts or sweatshirts, whatever. Jed talked about this years ago. He used to do, you know, he goes to these comic cons and he used to do, you know, Fox Moon t-shirts and stuff like this. You've seen me in the videos. I have a Fox Moon t-shirt from Jed and he had to give it up truckloads of stuff to go to a comic con he's got the t-shirt in black with white lettering he's got it in sml and xl and xxl xxxl xxxxl you see where this is going So maybe one of those drop ship deals, you find one of these websites that offers quality shirts, hopefully, whatever you work it out, they have the PDF files or whatever, and then, uh, you know, you just order from there. Did I help Shirley? No, Shirley, this is nothing to do with me at all. I am not in any way anything to do with Jed's Jiclay prints. He designs them by himself. I have nothing whatsoever to do with those. Jed is a machine. He's a factory for print designs. I have nothing to do with anything that's on his Jiclay page at all. Okay, let me get for a minute. Okay, warning, I believe we're okay with compressing and limiting, but this may be some tapping. So let's do a test here just for a second. Are you ready? Headphone people, ready, ready, ready? I think we're okay, but I am now going to bang for a bunch of minutes here. I'd rather do it this way. We would prepare EPS files or something with like the thing that people wanted, the Mokohankan logo or print designs, and just put them for free download on our site. Download for free, go over to XX website where you can order your own t-shirt. So I'd rather do it that way, I think. So people could get the stuff, but Dave is not selling merch, you know. That might be a good idea. your own Mokohankan merch. The more I think about that, the more I like that. Part of it is stupid pride, you know. It's really stupid pride. I know foreigners here in Japan, maybe not so much these days, but in the day when I was here first, the first 5, 10, 15 years, whatever, when you met a foreigner in Japan, you knew what he's doing. He was teaching English. He, she was teaching English. And there were people who you'd meet somebody, they're playing biwa and giving concerts or they're studying calligraphy or whatever. Wow, they're a calligrapher. They're an English teacher who was dabbling this on the side. So Dave's pride was that, no, I don't teach English. I'm a real person. <laughs> so, so the idea of, of, you know, I'm a printmaker, I'm a printmaker. It was like, like some kid who needs validation and verification. No, no, I don't teach English. I don't teach English. I'm not one of those foreigners. <laughs> I'm a real one. So, so this goes back all those years to when this was strong in my mind, you know. That's probably the same thing. No, we don't sell merch. We make wood buck prints. <laughs> so. Vacuum cleaner, the lady with the vacuum cleaner. Is the noise okay outside? Mm -hmm. 
you got to come up to these lines bit by bit you know if I try and carve too close to this line it'll split out this is really not good wood so getting rid of as much waste on the other side first as possible before trying to get close to this line Starting with the cross grain because the cross grain is so much easier. It's so much easier to control. When you run the length of these things, the chisel just wants to run all over the place. The wood wants to split out. We're okay, Michelle. We're okay. How's our time? 8.46. Okay, what we have, I've got video. I've got video from the lab upstairs. That's only about 10 minutes. Then we have show and tell. What we have for show and tell today? There's not one specific object. Here's a package I got on auction. What I have for show and tell today? I brought one of the black folders down from the collection room upstairs. So it's too much. It's, it's dozens and dozens and dozens of prints. So we'll just take a look at the folder. We'll flip through for a little bit and see and talk about some of the stuff. So the show and tell is a variable mix and match show and tell today. Someone's asking, what would you charge for a woodblock personal portrait? You're not talking to me, right? You're talking to somebody else in the stream, caring to somebody? We don't do commissions of any kind whatsoever. We are completely, totally, absolutely full with all of our own work. So we, we don't do any commissions, I'm sorry. If that was aimed at me, I don't know. That could have been a question for somebody else. Should have come in from the outside. Come in from the outside. Boom. A bit closer. This one now we have no idea which way it goes. I'm guessing this way, but I'm always fooled. A chip off the old block. Actually, it'll be gone by the time you see, we get there. That's all waste wood that will be removed anyway. So. Now for this stuff, there's no way I'm going close to the line first because this is variable. This could go split left, it could split right. You can see the grain, it curves here and it curves back in. So I have to be really careful. So first pass here, I keep away from that line. Seems like it's gonna behave. Now we can nibble up closer now that we know what's going on.
Do I feel the urge to use power tools? No, not in the slightest. That's zero. No. But it's funny, you know, if you ask me, why am I not going to use any power tools? A couple of reasons. One is just I like exercising my, 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 whatever. Just I like working. I like, I like doing this work. This is not a chore. This is pleasure. The power tool thing, if you need something done faster than you can do it by hand, people who are in a commercial environment need to do it faster. I get it. It can maybe the power tool can cut straighter by hand in that environment. Go for it. Uh, you know, of course, so when you're looking at efficiency or accuracy and in volume, power tools have a real meaning. I mean, when we built our shop here, we used power tools to do this. But here, why don't I use a power tool? For two reasons, as I said. One is because the work I'm doing now is not a chore. It's pleasure. I like doing this, and I'm not in any way trying to find a way to have this work taken away from me. And the other one is, it's just too freaking noisy. Basically, the answer is just as I said, you know, what I'm doing now, it's, the, it's that same phrase that I overuse too much, what I'm doing now here. This is not a bug, this is a feature. This is what we like to do, you know. It's also a real source of pleasure, you know. I'm fooling around here, bang, 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 but it's a real source of pleasure getting a, a job to be done, getting some tools, sharpening them up, bang, 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 a few minutes later and beautiful work is done. You didn't use a tool. I mean, you didn't use a you know machine to do it. It's really a source of pleasure. You know? <laughs> when I say noisy, you mean, well, you know what I say, noisy. <laughs> of course, this is noisy as well, but it's a different kind of noise, you know? It's absolutely a different kind of noise. The, the, the power tool, it's not human. There's nothing, ah, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. That's a delivery to the meat restaurant next door. It's interesting the way that the different restaurants here do this. The meat restaurant next door, they haven't given these guys the keys, the delivery men. So they've got their shutter closed next door, and the delivery people just simply dump their packages outside the shutter. It's okay, nobody is gonna take anything, whatever. But some of the other restaurants, the Korean hot dog restaurant, they've got a system where they've got a lockbox outside. They've got a, it's a keypad. You type in the keypad, it opens and there's a key inside and that opens the shutter. The delivery guys put their stuff inside, close the shutter, put the key back in, close the lockbox. So there's different kind of approaches to this. The girl at uh, Tenkoku as well, she has a lock system and the, the delivery man actually have her key. You can see the guy gets out of his truck, he's got the box, he's got this massive key ring where, 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 we hunts through it, finds her key, opens the, the metal gate, puts the food inside and locks it. So sort of those three systems, the different restaurants have this, but, uh, and the one next door, they don't care. They've told the guys, just dump it outside the door. It's okay. So I could, I could, after the streamer, I could go in there, look in that styrofoam box, pull out some steaks and come back in, but nobody ever does, you know, so. <laughs>
aspect to the power tool thing, you know, I remember this. I remember Marco. I was in Canada. It would be in 2000 or 2001 or 1999 or something. The Baron Group, the internet group, the Baron Group, they had a get-together over in, uh, in Sydney in British Columbia. It was a get-together at, uh, at somebody's workshop. And a bunch of us were there. And uh, Marco from San Francisco was there. He was a young printmaker. These days he's become something else he was a chef for a while and now he's something to do with buzzwords i don't remember but uh, so he was an up-and-coming young printmaker and he had brought with him a tool for doing the job just what you saw me there and it was an electric chisel and it was some kind of a chisel like this that had a handle and a, and a power and the, the power went so all you had to do is you had to just sort of move the thing across and it did the digging 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 for you and he said, you know, he said, look, look, like this is, get one of these, David, saves all the time, get one of these. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. I'd rather have my right leg pulled off. And he says, no, it's much more efficient. You can get so much more work done. Think of how many more prints you could publish if, if he had one of these tools. And I watched him do it. And I said, that's not even faster than me. As well as being noisy, it's not even faster. So we had a bake-off. We prepared two blocks. I got my block there with roughly the same area. He got his block, and we had a bake-off. And we're both roaring through here trying to get the job done. And basically, there's no, there's no real moral to the story. We are about finished in the same time. I did my job with the hammering, 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 that kind of noise. Oh, it must be Ayana san. Morning. morning, morning, morning. Hello, hello, hello. So it was basically 50 50, you know. Come and say hello. Hey, hey, morning. Hey, hey, hey. This is your last Saturday. Last Saturday, yes. Right? Yes, right? yes. She's going to be a real employee like Monday to Friday, hit the grind Monday morning. Oh my God, I got to go to work Friday. Thank God it's Friday, right? Is that the routine? <laughs> She starts next Friday, the 1st, the 1st, so this is still, her job over there is still Monday to Friday, so she's free on Saturday. What was I doing? Oh yeah, pretty cool. come, come, come. I do. I gotta ask something about you. Putting this on now reminds me about a conversation we had here the other day. There was a couple of guests from Australia here the other day. The shop is still closed, but they had come over and looked through the door. Can we come inside? And I was here. Whatever, sure, come inside. And they were. It turns out they were YouTube fans. And he lives. He's been living in Japan for a few years. Anyway, long story short, blah 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 blah. We had some nice conversation. And we were thinking about the idea, talking about the thing about what happens when Japan opens up again. The idea is Japan is still close to tourists. I know foreign students are now coming in bit by bit. Business people are coming in bit by bit. There's no tourist visa still being allowed in Japan. But the idea seems like it might be on the table now for this summer or this fall or something. We don't know. But thinking about this, the three of us were standing here talking. How is this going to play? Because Japan right now is a 100% masked up society. The culture here has changed in the past couple of years. We've always been masking. You'll see people walk down the street with a mask on. It's nothing strange, but it hasn't been. Everybody. But now it's 99.9999999% masked up. Nobody, if I walked outside now without a mask on, people would cross the street. They would just keep away. It's a masked culture. So how is this going to play when a plane load of people arrives from, you name it, Britain, America, Australia, whatever, or none of whom mask anymore, they're going to pour off their plane, pour out through the airport, and wander all over Japan with no masks. And yet all of us, and this culture is not going to change for a long, long time, all of us are masked up. And how is that going to play? The wonderful Japanese hospitality, really friendly to all the foreigners, Sorry, no. I know us here, we're going to have me and a couple of, fl and if people open the door and come in here with no masks, I'm going to be like, sorry, no. And if there is no country policy in place, what we're going to do is we're going to put a stand outside with masks. There will be a stand outside the shop with a, a little hand washer thing and masks. If you would like to come to Mokohankan, mask up. And I guess that's probably how it's going to play. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know.
Remember, there's no mask mandate here in Japan. It's just the culture. Nay, ayano san we were talking about that yesterday. I, I should get busy with the other stuff. When Japan opens up, if you imagine, like, they make an announcement, tourists can come in from October, September, or something. But all the tourists who are coming from America or whatever, they won't have masks. And they're going to get off the plane, and they're going to mask up. They're going to say, no way. How is that going to play with tourists walking around town with no masks and all of us still masked up? It's not going to play very nicely, you know. So anyway, anyway, i got to get moving here. i got to get moving. Okay, i got some video to show. Any help? No, no, not yet. Thank you, not yet. Yeah. Actually, I didn't think about that. The, the show and tell today is a desktop show and tell, so I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Look, look, look. Yeah. 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 Okay, too. I also see there's the, the order box. I didn't check it since I'm sorry. See, the order box looks full for some reason this morning. Yeah. Yeah. But don't just uh, hang on till I get there, so we'll okay. have a look at this together. So. Okay, anyway, 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 enough about that. Let's uh, get on. Video, 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 video. We will temporarily put the outside camera off for a minute here or so, and we'll show some video. For those of you who don't know what's going on, a quick recap. We have had lots of trouble with fiber in our paper. We are trying to help the paper makers by devising perhaps a method of removing fiber from the raw material that they use to make paper. Dave just spent a half an hour doing a diatribe against power tools. We should do it by hand. <laughs> so, and now here I am. We are working on a way here of, of taking it away from human hands and using mechanical methods to take the bark out of paper. There's lots of different stories going on here. The long story short is that we are trying to change the order in the way things are done. Here's how traditional paper making is done. The bark comes from the bark suppliers. It's boiled. After being boiled, bark, dirty bark, is removed from the, the white bark, and it is then pounded, dispersed, and formed into sheets of paper. That's the traditional way. But picking the bark has taken more, most, more than half of the paper making time is taken up with the bark removal. So we are trying to do a way where we switch it around. The fiber is boiled. Instead of picking the bark at that point, we just move ahead with the pounding. Break up the fibers, disperse it. It's now dispersed with all the junk and dirt inside it. But because it's dispersed and floatable, we think we can take the bark out mechanically. The, uh, the an analogy I was using the other day was tomatoes. It's tomatoes. So here, let's pop up a video here. You saw first, I won't run these whole videos. This is what we looked at the other day. We looked at the first few seconds of it. I had it upstairs. I had this tank. And we were floating fiber down through the tank and using a jet of air like this to try and puff it out. Now, it didn't work because the air was not enough, obviously. I then moved ahead with the next version of this. I tried to reduce the flow of water. Still didn't work. It just became just dispersed all over the place. So those were sort of complete failures. I moved ahead the other day. This, is, uh, this next video is two days ago. We will see this start to finish. And I prepared, based on a suggestion from a person in Germany, Oliver in Germany, suggested that instead of doing it openly, that I trap, trap the water and trap the air. And it sort of seemed like this might actually work. It didn't because the tube I was using was way too narrow and the mulberry fiber just simply dropped into the tube, uh, stuck into the tube. So that was that. So I went ahead on Saturday, uh, Friday, yesterday after, yesterday evening, and we've got a different setup. And let's just play the video here. I'll pause it bit by bit as we go through. Okay, there. People who are asking about why don't we centrifuge this stuff, you can see here now what's going on. Centrifuging this just makes a big mass. There's no way any small bits of bark in here are going to be in any way separated from the stuff. So I'm sorry, the centrifuge, centrifugal, oh, centrifuging it does seem like a good idea, but I don't think with this consistency 
that that's a practical solution. I don't know. This is mulberry fiber in water after being beaten. And of course, what we've done is here, I've got a tank of water. There's no neti in here at this point. We can't use the neti at this point. The neti has to wait till the very last moment before the fiber is dipped. You can see it. Okay, let's pause this again for a sec, because Karen's got an interesting question. At the point when the mulberry fiber is being formed into sheets, this is sort of what it looks like. It's in a tank, it's dispersed, and at this point, the neti, the uh, hibiscus root thing goes inside to help float it onto the sheets. We can't put that in right now. That has to wait for the very last step. And it wouldn't help us anyway, because it makes the thing more glutinous and more sticky. So this is just raw fiber floating in water. And it does disperse well. The idea is, the f uh, once we open it, the fiber will come down the tube. And here we are. I've now built a little thing. I got busy with some glue, and I stuck together bits of tubing. The water with the fiber will come down from the top, and the air will come in from the left. That'll be the exit. There's the catch screen. And here's the where the air will come in. I haven't attached it here yet. And there is, in the back of it there, there's another pipe, which is the water uh, reflow. It takes the water back up in the original tank. We don't have a stream here. In the real papermaking world, there's a stream of water pouring in one end of the building, going out the other end. We'll be, of course, recycling the water, bottom, back up to top. That's the basic setup. And on the desk next to it, I've borrowed this from Aoyama-san. He was experimenting a while ago with, uh, I think he was painting with an airbrush. So this is his little desktop compressor that he was using for his airbrushing experiments. And as you can see, we've now clipped this and pumped this in. And there we are. So air from the compressor will blow into that stream. Are you hearing the audio from there? I, can, I myself can't hear the audio from the in blank video, but I believe it's playing there. That's the setup. Okay, here we go. This was the first test last night. As you can see, there is an interruption in the causal flow but it just pours back into the bucket. And I can't even see. Is there any causal there? I can't even tell. So this is not uh, going to be a practical way to move forward, but it does at least, the air does interrupt the flow of fiber. Yeah, shorter and higher pressure. This, obviously, you'll see in a few minutes here. This is absolutely going to be the key. I don't have a switch to the compressor. It's a big lever that turns on and turns off, and it takes me about a half a second to get it turned on. I'm struggling to make these puffs as short as I can. I just don't have the, the, the tool for it here at this point. It's a lever that I go ka-chunk, ka -chunk, open and close. But let's have a look at this. Now that we can see what was catching, Oh, here, a different view, same thing. I'm practicing, I'm trying to get them short. <laughs> so. also trying to inspect here the angle that the air is in you know this is a simply a first attempt the angle that the air hits is going to be important stuff like this there's lots of adjustments that are going to have to be made here 
But anyway, at this point, you can see, if I do keep the puffs short, we do actually get a little clump of fiber blown out. Now, pause this for a second. There's questions here. What I'm not at this point trying to remove bark. There's no camera inspecting the stream. I'm just randomly puffing this. The first attempt here is just to see, can we actually puff out clumps of fiber? If it looks like we can, we'll go ahead and build a real machine, which will be inspecting this as it goes through. It will inspect the flow, and as it sees fiber that needs to be removed, it will trigger a short, sharp, powerful blast of air to blow it out. And the angle of attack and the volume of air and the volume of water and the speed of water will all be really critically, critically, critically important. So there we are. We are getting fiber. We can interrupt this. Next step now is to try and play with the variables. Somebody's asking me, you should never have started this. Somebody says, I don't know here. I know the problem here is that it's getting worse and worse and worse. It's absolutely getting worse and worse and worse. The product that we want to make, the product that we would like to make is becoming impossible to make with the current situation. I cannot sell woodblock prints that look like this. There's no way. This is the problem. And I'm not going to do this. We cannot continue. And they can't help us. And that's just one example. The, the recent batch of paper, every single sheet had problems with it. Every single sheet. Trying to find one that's most visible here, love this sort of stuff. We can't make clean prints on the paper that we're getting. So I get it. There are people who say it's okay, it's just you know, natural stuff, just let it go. But no. So again, I haven't explained everything here. <coughs> Excuse me. I will read all these suggestions and agreements. I will uh, read all these suggestions. That's where we're at. I think we can see the glimmerings of a, of a possible machine here. Lots and lots of adjustments, lots and lots of variabilities. But... Okay, I'll read this later. I'm saying you're trying to read the stream now. No, I'll read the chat later, 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 later. Let's move on. I think it is 9.15. It'll be 9.15 in a few seconds. Let's look at some prints. Let's look at some prints. I'm struggling because I had the wrong glasses on. That's better. That's better. That's better. Okay, our block here is almost finished. It'll be finished in a few minutes. So I think what we're going to see on the next stream here, Monday morning, we will look at color separations on this. Okay, I'll read it later, read it later, read it later. Okay, what we've got here is a folder from upstairs. It's from the collection. And this is a folder that's been building up for a very, very, very long time. There are prints in here that came to me, oh, more than 30 years ago. It's totally unorganized, totally disorganized. It's actually basically random. And the folder itself has been replaced because it got too old. What it is, it's people over in the West who have looked at my website, who have got some advice from it or this or that, and who have made prints and who have sent prints to me saying, hey Dave, I'm enjoying doing this. I'll just send this to you so you can see what I've been doing. So this is a, a, a real mishmash. 
some of the prints here actually might even be from professional printmakers actually and some of the prints are just from people who just did a bit of printmaking from the website and it's completely random it's completely disorganized I haven't had any time to uh, sort it out it's stacked up and stacked up and stacked up and there's enough that we can just it, it just goes on and on and on and on and actually actually there are more prints in file folders that are waiting to be put into this but it seems to be when I was looking up there yesterday, what should I show on show until tomorrow? I think there's going to be a ton of stuff in here that should be interesting for everybody. These are not be they're not all beginner prints. Some of them are beginner prints. Some are made by complete professionals. Let's just start at one side of this book and go through bit by bit by bit and look at some of them. And I don't even remember what's in here. Let's just see what we turn up with. So this is not our typical show and tell looking at antique prints from the old days. And actually funny, this is here right on top because we talked about this gentleman the other day. Hasn't even got his name on it. It's Dave Stone. This is David Stone. I uh, know this would have been from, uh, from when is this? What's the date? 1987. Look at this. He's been here selling prints long before me. Uh, my first print went out here in 1989. So Dave is way, way older than me here. He's been in Japan much longer than me. He's been doing printmaking for longer. And this is a typical example of his style, which has got multiple color blocks for the same color. So he has color blends carved rather than printed. I'm not sure this one is so old and so early for him, he'd probably be embarrassed. Why are you showing them one of my early prints? Show something new. Whatever, this is all I got. <clears throat> he must have given it to me, I think. I went to visit him back in the late 1980s, and he must have passed this print over to me. And I'm not sure, yes, it's Japanese washi, but I'm not so sure it's such a cool washi. And this is his style. Very, very simple, interesting style. It's interesting to compare this with that Nakajima print we looked at the other day. Do you remember the Nakajima print with the fish in the transparent water? Oh, another one. I see. It's a set of two. I didn't even know. And uh, absolutely, his viewpoint and my viewpoint on some of these are completely different. He is thinking of these as objects that will be framed. So he's got stuff like this. On the outside of the block, there's smidges, you know, there's smears from the pigment outside the block. Dave doesn't care. In our workshop, we would not do this because we're looking at the prints as objects to be held in your hand and enjoyed. But for Dave Stones, because he's an artist, signing these and numbering these, he's thinking of these absolutely as being uh, framed, matted and framed, and put on the wall. The other funny thing about him is he's, Dave, because he's an artist, he's made himself a, a hunkle, an actual art name. Let me try and focus on this for a sec here. Those of you who can read kanji, there's two kanji here. One is the kanji for stone, and the other is the kanji for, it's pronounced ta, it's oi, it's a quantity, more than one, large quantity. So his name in English is Stone Z with an S. So if his name had been Stone, just the single kanji would do, but he has tried to make a kanji compound that would show multiple stones. That doesn't actually work that way in Japanese because we don't have, uh, what's the word, we don't have uh, quantities for nouns. There's no S at the end to make a quantity. But that's what he's done. Uh, so he calls himself uh, Ishita which is the pronunciation of that, which literally means it can be taken to mean stones.
Now I'm going to be in trouble here because a lot of these I have no idea now who these are from or what these are. Some of them I will recognize, some I will know, some I will not. Woodblock print, clearly. Photoshop layering. I've done this myself too, back in when we were doing the Baron Group. I tried doing this myself for a couple of prints. You take something into Photoshop and you split it into, what do you do? You, uh, I forget the word for it. It's not layering, it's uh, you split it into color values. So it's from zero to 260. If you had 260 layers, it would look like a photograph. If you take your zero to 260 and you split it into 10, you get something like this, where you get steps from the lightest one up to the top one. Posterize is one, that's not the word I'm thinking about, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, whatever, anybody with Photoshop skill knows how to do this. And he's done this with two colors, and I don't have a clue who this is, I'm sorry, there's no signature. There might be a letter or something with it, or, or maybe I've lost it, I don't know, I really don't know. And it looks completely carved and printed by hand. It's when you decide to do how many steps, I know. I can't remember, I'm sorry, I don't know. This is going way back, this is 1999. These, some of these will be from people in the Baron group. Lots of different ideas. A simple print, sky in the ground. Ray Hudson, I don't remember, I'm sorry. Baron Exchange number three. So, so, so. Oh, this is fun. Look at this. I can give you a look. This is Andy. This is not an amateur at all. This is a fully professional printmaker. His name is Andy English. And he is making woodblock prints, but not in the Japanese style. He is working as a wood engraver. What you're seeing here, it's a single piece. It will probably be boxwood or perhaps pear. I'm not sure what wood he would have used. And he cuts away the white lines. So opposite to what you saw me doing an hour ago, where I am leaving the black lines and cutting away everything else, he starts with the ground and he cuts away the white lines. This is an engraving, a wood engraving. It could also be called a wood cut. I don't know, the terminology is, is varied. And this is from Andy. And he's a full professional. He's doing, he's got some great stuff. He got a commission once to design some stamps for the British Post Office. This is so cool. If you look him up, Andy English, there must be a website and a blog for him. He got a commission to do a set of postage stamps, and I was just, wow, wow, that's just so cool. And he is very, very skilled at this. The printing is not done uh, by hand. The printing is done in a press, and he has an old Victorian, maybe earlier, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing Victorian-era printing press. I think it's an Albion. And on top of that also, he is a really, really, really nice guy. Ho, 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 here we go, something completely different. This is from a gentleman who sends me a handmade New Year card every year. And this is not a watercolor painting. This is actually a woodblock print. This is a woodblock print. From a Japanese hobbyist. I remember, I don't. Hagiwara-san, soka, soka, soka. He may be gone now, actually. I used to get these from him every year, but I haven't seen some in recent years. I think he may be a, He was a retired gentleman who was enjoying making prints, had a very specific style. This is actually a woodblock print, layer after layer after layer after layer of it. And the white you see here, he's used a white pigment for this, and somehow he has made it look semi-transparent and gradation. I have no idea how he has done all of this. This was his hobby. 
And I've got a bunch of, I, well, I've probably got about 20 of these all sorted in different folders and files all over the place. Some of them will be in my New Year's section, New Year's card section. Very wet paper, very soggy Japanese paper. He's probably making not too many copies, and to quite an extent, he's probably painting on the blocks. This cloud area here, for example, is probably brushed, painted onto the block and then printed. So if we saw multiple copies of this print, these clouds would, I think, perhaps vary one to another. This is not my personal taste. I don't like blurriness in my prints. I like sharp, clarity, flat colors. That's just my personal taste, but lots of people do like this. But my God, it's a stunning amount of work. Oh, here he is some more. The same guy, here, here, here. Oh, look at, the, they're all, here, this whole group is by the same guy. Let's look at another one. Hagiwara-san. Very tasteful. If he had gone to the time and trouble of making these larger, he could have really made a big deal out of this. You know? It was his hobby, was, is, I'm sorry, was, is. It's on thicker paper, much, much thicker paper. Whoa. This would be, I think, Kamikochi, the famous area up there. And there's a thing, this, I gotta be careful what I say, because it might be taken to be a bit insulting or whatever. It's not insulting. People like this, Hagiwara-san, he is doing this as a hobby. This is his hobby. And there are, across this country, there are thousands of people who make prints like this at this level. You know, what, what would you call them? Sunday woodblock carvers. On a, it's a still a big deal for retired people to get bits of wood and to chop them up. There's, there's uh, lessons available in many parts of the country. Uh, Gosho-san has a class. He runs his class in his local community center. Um, Matsumura-san would like Matsumura supplies the materials for them. There are hundreds and hundreds of people across the country here making prints like this and having their exhibitions here and there. There used to be an expression about Japan being Hanga no Kuni, the kingdom of prints. And I really don't know how much of it is still going on these days, but it has been a real, real big deal here. So I said, I said amateur, but I meant that in no way the guy is making work that I wouldn't have a clue how to do this. I'm, I'm lost as how to do this. So I don't say amateur in any sense of being a, he's only an amateur. Just simply he doesn't uh, do it for, for a profession. But interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. And none of it in very large quantities for his friends and people in the group. He may be a member of a hunger circle, a hunger group. And actually, probably you're looking at here, we're probably looking at a, a, a transition from maybe the early time to the later time, I don't know. In my correspondence files, the New Year card files, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prints like this. Japan is full of people who enjoy doing work like this. This is a different person. This is Kaneta-san. Member of the same, uh, same, same group of people, I think, so Kaneta-san. I think at one point, I don't remember quite clearly, this is decades ago now, at one of the exhibitions that I did for the poets, a group of these men came in. I sort of have a vague memory about this. And th they were showing me their work, and they looked at mine, oohed and awed at mine, I oohed and awed at theirs. And I think I must have said something like, hey, this looks cool. Tell you what, if you send me anything that you make, I'll, I'll reply, I'll send back one of mine in exchange, and stuff like this. So I probably said something like this to, to the guys of this group. And then over the next couple of years, I was inundated. They just sent me everything they could possibly make. And I had to get my New Year's cards and postcards and send them back out and stuff like this, you know. It was great fun. It settled down after a while, but for a while there. That's not a print, that's a postcard. So. so okay, so that's one page of this folder. And uh, what I should do, before I do the next page tomorrow, I should do a, bit of a little bit more research so I know what it is I'm going to find and what I'm going to talk about. <coughs> but let's do that. 
for the next few days on the show and tell, let's use this book as a resource and let's look at some small interesting prints. Wonderful stuff, absolutely wonderful stuff. A lot of it now, the, the date, date is lost. Who they're from and what they are, I just don't know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, Ayana san is waiting. She's eager beaver here waiting. We've got to process a bunch of orders and get busy with things. <laughs> she's just laughing, it's true. But I'll be back here on Monday and we'll be doing, almost certainly, we'll be doing the color separations for John's monkey in the onsen print. And I'm not quite so sure how to do this, but I'll study up and we'll get ready for it and do it online. And I will very much be interested in reading through your comments about the Chiritori and what new ideas might be presented here for them. Thank you. Let's put up the outside camera, as always, before we sign off here. It hasn't started raining yet, but any minute now, it's going to be raining. All, all weekend long, we're forecast for rain. I can see the sky tree windows. <laughs> and maybe from the sky tree windows, you can see my printing desk here. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm getting out of here. Thanks very much, gang. See you next time. Thank you, and bye for now. <laughs>